Creep Services, how can I help you? This is Marjorie speaking. Marjorie, I'm calling about the Control review. It's been out four years, not a single video on the whole channel. Um, apologies, you've come through to the local co-op section. What button did you press? Bear with me. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Um, I've been informed that Control's been on numerous sci-fi lists and even top women in gaming. Marjorie, listen, it's out on Game Pass. It's never had a standalone review. I want to see it on Ultra, PC, full settings. Let's get this on. You are through the couch coop and we're going to be looking at control on PC, ultra settings, but no ray tracing. It tipped it. I couldn't get 60 frames. I really want to see this game smooth. It was janky as hell over on the PlayStation 4 and they never got to the 5 version. Mainly out of protest, Remedy pulled a pay to play quite an extortionate amount over for the 5 conversion of the game. And at the time, this wasn't really done. Horizon was doing it for free, Borderlands. But it is kind of a staple now, charging for the same game over on that higher generation system. I do want to talk about Remedy and the main protagonist and the recent controversies with Alan Wake 2 and Sweet Baby Inc. and this character design. I picked out Jesse Fadden for my top women in game on the top generation systems mainly because of how reserved she is how conservative her dress sense is and how well it fits with that sort of directorial hierarchy that they've set up in this game this is the actress that the character is based off of and there are some adjustments I feel in the final edition of what this person actually looks like within in game you saw that early promotional material and then we got their ultimate edition cover and there have been adjustments and after this whole whole SBI controversy, I'm double taking everything because they were so heavily involved with Remedy and Alan Wake 2. I don't know if this slider was moved to appease their outsourced agency. And I really don't want to be doing that with video games. It should all be organic. It's also really surprising that a studio the size of Remedy feels it needs to outsource this sort of thing. I think there's been a creative eggshell environment made by a certain group that means that they needed to be brought in externally for a high cost and this is not good Kotaku are looking under a lot of pressure hopefully it's all going to come crashing down soon and everything's going to go back to normal where video games have characters in and diversity that the developers intended I think that's probably the way forward so I'm not sure if you're noticing what's going on in the background here but this PC version <laughs> is not without fault it's not on the SSD loads of key textures did not load in one of which is essential to a puzzle I need to do stuff like that didn't put me off I had a crack in time going through this game again it is a top-notch third-person ARPG and if you know the channel this should have gone on that recent list it really should have done because running it on PC I'm seeing more particles I'm getting a lot of frame rate this damn game pops <laughs> You're also going to only see mid-tier abilities and weapons. The woman can fly towards endgame and you've also got incredible amount of rock manipulation abilities available to you. Now that brings me on to this game's influences, which is really what this video is about. I was looking up to see if any of the designers had spoken to the media about their influences. There is a little bit out there and this Hollywood Reporter horrendous article really only points to David Lynch's work as a major influence. I think that is underselling a lot of the sections of this game and it points to a lot more mainstream media than I think this article lets on. I love David Lynch but I don't see loads of them in control. Welcome. I'm Dr. Marvin 
Roman candle. I do see a lot of that Dharma influence that we saw in early Lost back when it started out when it was half decent. And I love the flashback idea and the recorded tutorials from scientists. It really does give a creepy vibe. The whole law of control is basically pinned on this sort of setup. And we see it quite a lot. I put Super 8 on the other night. The film J.J. Abrahams got out before he turned into the destroyer of sacred IPs. After exposing the craft to a barrage of forces, electromagnetic and otherwise, it almost appeared to have defended itself by reconstituting into component cube parts. The game's law also leans on experiments, things going wrong, coming in touch with a force that the scientists don't understand that then becomes unmanageable. That's another major hook for the entire control backstory and why this situation has come about. That telekinesis and sort of mind travel idea has been around in a lot of sci-fi previous to this game and I really love how it's produced, how it's represented to the viewer in early Stranger Things. Damn that show hit the skids. How does Control plant its ideas so successfully in your head as you're playing through these various different levels when it gives you an organic feel with the positioning of a lot of the clues and it goes on that sort of minimum amount of information provided. From software are really good at this, they genuinely rely on you being proactively interested in where that story is going to then sort of turn over objects or make that extra effort to sort of get the clues, find more dialogue tapes. That's the best way forward with decent stories, shoving it down the player's neck on a compulsory level where you're just slapping through loads of cutscenes and not taking it all in. Control goes that slightly more passive method and that definitely is more memorable and also quite voluntary, meaning if you don't want it, you don't have to get involved. You can just stick to this excellent third person shooting. And I will say after sitting down with this PC version for a couple of days, my God, the dissipation and particle detail and the smoke, the way it's almost petrol like mist in the air. It's a hell of a thing. Look at this projection. Really convinced A, that wouldn't move. B, it would just mess around with the projection mechanic. It's top notch stuff. Closet. They pulled the cord and were instantly to the Ocean View Motel and Casino. Dream like hell. There is one more film reference I want to put in, and it is Terry Gilliam's Brazil. You will notice that this game is quite analog. There's loads of rear projection, green screens, and also the method of communication in this building is still tubes and air pressure ducts. Old school delivery of scrolled up pieces of paper to different floors. It's a great idea. It kind of brings it all down to earth a bit because this game is very much up in the clouds with its concepts. <laughs> Let's get back to that combat. Let's talk about third person shooters and how well versed I am with the genre. It's probably one of my favorite sort of modern gaming fruitions. It's having that over the shoulder, having that space around you, being able to see the character, bullets fly over your head, you know how close everything is. Even getting into cover feels a lot more realistic as opposed to having your face up against a wooden post. <laughs> also a very interesting thing happening with your weapon there are no bullets on the ground you do not have a reload button it's all about that recharge it's almost housemark arcade level leave the gun alone for a bit because you've exhausted those bullets you have to fall back on your projectile weaponry which is so second nature that's another thing picking things up and throwing them and seeing the explosions will cause the console version to tip over at times with this pc <laughs> wolf it's very satisfying <laughs> The RPG aspect of the acronym, I feel, falls into its kind of crafting and loot system, which it hasn't skimped on. You collect various different mods, you can blend them into each other, you can also upgrade a mod and start switching stuff out. You do have to craft your actual weapons once you get to those particular elements. So there's very much an idea of building your character up to what you really want to take advantage of. It might be high dodge speed, it might be improving that block, or even sharpening
in some of the accuracies of your already earned weapons. Constantly finding stuff like this on the ad hoc though is just totally amazing and half the reason I wanted to make this video. The Fallout series does this sort of thing really well, as does Bioshock, sort of commercializing childhood cartoons into an almost horrific final result. A great example of that is the Cheddar Monster from the Mandy films. Guys, if you haven't watched Mandy yet, you're all in loads of trouble with me. But the other reason I've got this fired up on PC, particularly off Game Pass, is that it comes with a bundle, AWE, the new mission and story content that was added on as DLC, is just available full blown in the download. So it's a massive win for me. I've got these amazing graphics and performance. I've got that DLC thrown in and I'm not paying full whack for the game off the shelf. Do you think this main character may have looked different if it wasn't for SBI involvement? Was there even any Sweet Baby Inc. involvement? And have you played Alan Wake 2? I would love to hear from you in the comments. I haven't got to it yet. One of the strange things about that game is it's not available physical anywhere yet, which has kind of got to change. And just finally, because I don't want this review to go out as a completely pristine, the controls amazing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the sycophantic drivel, it does have an extremely uncomprehensible map system. It is so difficult for me to understand. It's not tiered in the levels. There is no clarity about where you have to go. There is no arrow. It's just a yellow name on a major section and you will be running around completely lost not sure if the quest you're doing is integral to the story or not or whether it unlocks some amazing new weapon the jury's out <laughs> But the jury isn't out on whether Control is a decent third person shooter is absolutely excellent and it hasn't aged one iota over these last four years. Those detailed particle physics and explosive mechanisms still look absolutely amazing. This is something you need to visit, particularly on Game Pass, even if it's over on the PSN Extra. I would like feedback on how well that PlayStation 5 version performs against what it costs. I've been Couch Coop. I will see you down there.